Every go everybody, how's it going today? So, um, I wanted to go over another book review today. Um, this one is on this book, Emotions Revealed, Understanding Faces with and Feelings, by um, Paul Ekman. Now, um, those who have also um, studied about, you know, Paul Ekman, or, you know, done some research about him, um, he's, um, he's um, considered by, you know, many uh, as really the... Um, pioneer of um, emotional expressions basically and of you know um, um, facial expressions actually and uh, as well as you know emotions and in understanding people's um, emotions based on their face basically you know based on their facial expressions basically um, and he's done you know and he's like to travel to you know multiple tribes around the world which he also explains in this book basically um, um, to uh, you know, try you know extrapolate what what the um, emotions they have, and whether it's 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 the same as the Western world basically, um, whether it's you know different etc. Right, um, and and he goes more into detail into this book really. So um, um, I will first you know start out with um, what are the whether what are the contents in, in the book really. So um, first of all, he goes into how, um, emotions. Through through different cultures, basically, right? Um, and then he goes into um, where do we get our emotions from, um, and um, and how evolution has though has though like helped us um, 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 with um, survival via via um, emotional reactions, etc. Um, and then he goes into you know how we can you know dissipate or you know minimize. Um, um, emotional emotional reactions as well as you know factors to include um, when 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 um, when we feel these emotional impulses right factors to um, include on though how we can actually dissipate it basically and what and 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 where certain problems may be basically um, and, and then he goes on to you know um, different you know multiple chapters basically one chapter only on anger one chapter on fear um, and sadness um, etc basically and in these and in these chapters basically he just basically explains in in depth basically um where do these emotions come from basically and then he shows you know um images basically of like the how um people's facial expressions changes basically and how you can detect whether 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 they're saying the truth or um or like the what are they feeling by their by their um, emotions, basically. Um, so there has been a wide um, there has been a wide agreement, really, um, throughout most of most of the world that that though there are six universal emotions or six in that emotions. I, I think it is. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not sure in that, but I know they are universal, um, and they are fear, anger, sadness, happiness, surprise, disgust. Now, all these six universal Emotions, basically, right? Then come also secondary uh, emotions. You know, um, um, emotions which which so lead after these um, universal emotions. Um, and then, of course, um, emotions, um, according to Paul Ekman, come and go. Um, feelings as well. You know, come and go, right? We um we don't naturally have them, basically. So now, um, uh, emotional responses occur because over the course of of evolution, it was you know necessary. For um, survival purposes, to um ha to have other people know um, when we sense m when we sense danger, um, that was the main point of, of the book that Dope Paul Ekman went into when he talked about um, why we have um, emotional res responses, basically, right? But but then he also said that you know that um that's uh, that's also helped us in um, salient circumstances basically right and that um and that from evolution we've all um um we all have basically in, in our in our brains what's called auto or auto or appraisers which will help us de de detect and um um confiscate basically our our um in environment basically right um, and of course, for the most part, they have done just fine because if you guys read um, Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, basically, he talks about, you know, system one, which, which you know, system one is basically where we, where we make most of our decisions anyways. 
and we do just fine basically throughout our life because if not then we couldn't live in this in this um, complex world which we which we live in today basically you know um, so um so they've all helped us right now um when you guys read more on, uh, about Paul Ekman's um, um, uh, understanding of you know emotions from culture to culture right um, this is only a, a really short excerpt, you know, cherry picking, cherry picking really from the whole chapter. You guys have to read the whole chapter, right? But um, from one small part of the whole chapter, basically, he goes into the fact he's like, you know, that you know every culture assimilates loss with um with the uh, um exim sorry every culture is uh, assimilates something lost with um that of that of feeling sad. Now, um, th now that loss, basically, whatever is lost, you know, varies from you know culture to um to um, culture, um, on 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 whether you will feel sad or not, basically. So, um, um, but then he goes more into that. I just thought that was quite fascinating, basically. Um, and and then he, and then he also quotes um many experts, you know, within his findings, people which um yeah you guys might be interested in or like uh, some of you might even know. Richard Lazarus and Peter Goldie as well. So I think that was also good, you know. Now um, I want to talk about facts, um, which um, you know stands for Face Action Coding System. Now um, this was actually developed um, by a, by a Swedish anatomist um, Carl Hermann uh, Hortzel. Hortzel. Um, and then, of course, later uh, adopted by Paul Ekman and his and his fellow um, um, uh, partner in this, um, Wally Wally Fearson. And I think 1978, they don't like to published um, an article on it or something. Um, and and that's how this you know face action coding system thing spread it, spread it basically, right? But I mean, what it is basically, it's it's it's. Um, it's a way of though how we can systematically cate categorize people's emotions based on their facial expressions, basically, right? Um, and then if you guys go online and stuff, and even if you guys go to you know paulekman.com, I think it is, um, he has you know um, paid um, pay paid courses, basically, where though um, you can actually learn from the facts um, how you can detect um, people's Emotions, basically, right? Um, and then, if you guys go on online, you know he goes more into um, more into more into detail on that on his on his website. So, um, um, I wanted to um, explain to you guys t today, basically, two um, main um, or two most important things which I got from from this book, really. Um, and so uh, I'll just read one of them, and then I will um, describe the other one, basically. So one of them is um, um, basically, you know, um, he he talks about um, when we become emotional, really, you know. And he says, you know, there are like the nine different ways when we become emotional, um, and those are, you know, from the out from the outer appraisers. Um, then you have reflective appraisal. Memory of past experience, imagination, talking about a past emotional event, emotional empathy, others instructing you what to be emotional about, a violation of social norms, or voluntarily assuming the appearance of an emotion. So, um, th those are really the nine ways why we become emotional, right? Um, and it's been studied, you know, um, over over the course of um, a lot of years, basically. Um, I'm not saying it's it's the absolute nine ways. Um, I think it's I think it's the most accurate um, nine nine ways of why we become emotional, right? So um, I thought that was really just um, some you know um, um, informational knowledge which um, which just like helps us you know understands understand when when we become emotional, right? Now um, the those Second um, golden golden nugget which I took from this book was was just basically that there are six factors to actually understand um, why we become no sorry six six factors to understand how we um, 
um, how we can dissipate our though emotional trigger towards a certain stimuli. Now, um, I will first I actually you know read out all six, and then I'll explain an example from my part of the of the book. Right now, um, here we go. So, like number one is you know closeness of of evolved theme with the trigger. Um, knowing how current, um, yeah, knowing um, how close the you know, current incidents of of my triggering towards an towards a stimuli um, resembles the original situation of when I first um, felt an an emotional tr trigger towards a certain s stimuli. Number three is um how how early of course was this you know trigger learned? Um, number four is um um what's the initial emotional charge basically? Um, number um, five is the um, density of the of the um, emotional you know or like the like the sorry density of of the experience basically. And what that means basically is that um how frequent has um have the um have these emotional triggers towards this certain stimuli happen basically because that also um affects basically how you can dissipate your though emotional trigger towards a certain stimuli right and then of course lastly is called the um effective style right and that's and that's just basically you know um how impactful or like how high is my emotional trigger when i when I am tr tr triggered by a certain by a certain stimuli, right? Now, um, putting them in in like a practical sense, um, in my case, right? Um, I actually have though developed this um, weird, you know, um, thing in my head, basically. Um, growing up, basically, when I used to swim in in a pool, I used to have this emotional reaction, basically, and it was all you know imagery, you know, in my head, basically. You know, it wasn't even real at all, you know. So it was quite a um, delusional state of mind that I was in, right? But um, I, I, I had the, you know, um, I had acquired this um, a, a, a emotional tr trigger t t towards a an, an um, a imaginative shark in in the pool wanting to wanting to wanting to eat me, eat me, right? Now, of course, that you know tr trigger occurred somewhere around my um, around my, I think, around my. 16th, 16th birthday or something, 16th, 17th birthday, basically, and ever since then, you know, I've always had this those same frequency of the um, um, emotionally triggered towards this imaginative stimuli, basically, w when I'm when I'm swimming in the, in a pool, basically, right? Um, and so, um, but but my effective style, um, or like though my um, or my in intensity of the emotional trigger towards that imaginative stimuli was never quite, you know, that, you know, emotional. So it was, you know, like the medium, you know. So um, as well as, you know, um, I did, you know, re I, I did react directly when I hit, um, when I jumped into the water, basically, especially um, by myself, you know, when I was swimming by myself, basically, just, you know, doing, you know, laps and, um, by myself. I, I had this weird imaginative um, shark, you know, coming up to actually eat me, right? And so, um, as you guys can see, right, these were all emotional triggers based on some imaginary lunacy, basically. So, um, how I got over it, really, was, um, if you guys ever read the book, um, The Mindful Athlete by George Mumford, he was the, he was the sports psychologist of, um, of, um, of the Ch Chicago Bulls during the late 90s. Um, as well as I think he also was of the, of the um, Lakers as well um, of the early of the early 21st century and stuff you know um, and um and in and in his book you know the mind for athlete which actually came out last year only I think it was um, he talks about the importance of the AOB awareness of awareness of breath right um, and he talks about the fact that you know when we um, when we are emotionally triggered towards a certain stimuli, the reason why we though like we though yeah, like to react unconsciously, basically, is because we though yeah, react once we once we get in um, in close perimeter with that stimuli, whether it's whether it's whether it's real or whether it's not. In my case, it was not right. 
So like as soon as I jumped into the pool, basically directly, I was I was in contact with this you know magic tick shark coming up to actually eat me, right? So yeah, you guys can see that you know that's just um, lunacy, really, you know. So um, what um, George Mumford says basically is that th is that there's no space basically between my uh, emotional trigger and the um, and the um, stimuli, right? So it happens, you know, all, um, automatically, right? So what he says is that um, you have to create a space between your emotional trigger and between the um, um, stimuli, which then makes you uh, emotional. And this is through what the, he calls the awareness of breath, right? And just being mindful of the present moment, basically. So what he says is that if you guys um, gently breathe in and out, and you guys feel you guys' um, lungs, you know, going up and down and up and down, and, and you don't centralize on that, basically, right? What will what, what will happen after a while? Of course, this also takes you know reinforced reinforced practice, so it um, won't happen once. But after a while, once it once it becomes a a though ingrained habit, basically in your mind, basically, right? When you though um when you want to feel um or when you have this urge. For an for an emotional um, trigger towards a certain stimuli, base right. Just by concentrating on on your breath, base right. What that does, basically, is that that is that that creates an air between the between your uh, emotional impulse and between the stimuli, right. And by creating a little like space, right, then you're more able to become aware of your the emotional uh, emotional trigger, right. Um, and then you're able to like to uh, calm down, basically, you know, and not have this intense um, emotional uh, emotional reaction towards a certain stimuli. Now, of course, it's um harder than that, though, of course, because you know my case is um is an imaginative one, and so I think it's so easier if 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 you just imagine these or stuff in your head. And then you're able to um, um, stop this emotional reaction. Then, if it really happens, right? But I, I guess um, that's just one technique out of many, which um, you guys could probably adopt. You know, um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, and um, I want to say as well that you know, um, Paul Ekman talks about. He says, you know, emotions are fine, basically, because they are because they are an evolutionary process, right? But you know, Ekman says that that. It's still like the mood which we have to watch. He says, you know, mood it, moods are unintended consequences of our emotions, right? And so he says, you know, um, you 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 can have emotions um, and emotional reactions towards um, stimuli, you know, and that's fine. But what you don't want really is the is is the mood and and like what is it, what is a mood? In my case, in my understanding of of, of a mood, basically is a is a prolongation of a certain emotion, right? I don't want that, you know, because when you prolongate a certain uh, um, emotion, in, you know, um, um, especially if it's a if it's an ineffective, inaccurate one, basically, you know, then it all like makes you feel worse and stuff, you know. And um, so, like to to like counteract that, right? I always have in my brain, basically, this is not um, to actually take serious at all and stuff, you know, I don't think there's any scientific evidence of this, you know, but I have it just in my brain, you know, so I, don't, I just basically un un understand it, basically, so, um, and I'll show it also, you know, to you guys right here, so, if you guys look at the um, neurosis graph, right, this is a graph in which, in which I always have in my head, right, so if you guys look at the neurosis, right, I hope I spot it right, yeah, mm, neurosis graph, right? So, like, though, uh, um, imagine this here was a line, and, and this was you, right? This was your um, um, normal you without any emotional reactions and stuff, right? So, yeah, this is your n normal you, right? Then you have an emotional reaction, right? So then, um, so then of course, you know, the um, um, body temperature rises, you know, blood, you know, um, circulates more through your body. And then you feel more, and then you have like an emotional impulse, right? Well, to not have the prolongated emotion, which I call mood, um, so like to not have the mood prolonged, basically, I always try to use the analogy of the 
coming back to my to my default mode. Then I go throughout my life again, and then I have an, another emotional reaction, and then I come back down to my default mode, and, and, and then I go again. And by doing that, basically, what I do is that I distinguish between noise and signal, right? So, um, if you guys read as well, um, like I've like I've already expressed, um, Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, he talks that you know about that most of the information which we get, um, whether it's from our um, most of reactions to um, stimuli, they're only they're only noise. That means you know they're only stuff to only confuse us, really. You know, they're um, it's it, it, it's really inaccurate, ineffective. Um, information, right? And it's just like noise coming through our head, basically, right? So, like he says, you know, you want to eradicate the noise, and you only want though, in um, you only want signal, basically. So I, I I look at it like how he says, you know, simply that you know all the like the noise in my life, you know, people's you know opinions about this and that, you know, my thoughts about this and that, um, my um, disempowering beliefs about uh, about this and that, my um. Dif defeats about uh, about this and that and stuff you know they're all you know noise you know and that's all it is noise so i only i only have this in mind basically just to um be always in my default mode right and even if i respond to an emotional emotional action um i'm sorry even if i spot even if i respond emotionally t towards a st um stimuli then i always come down and then i do the same come down um that way you are more of a calm person who only responds to um, signal, you know, not not to noise. So I think that's a good analogy, especially for me to have in, in my brain when I go through um out um through throughout my life, really, you know. Um, but yeah, it's um it's a really good it's a really good book, you know, this one here, uh, emotions Re revealed. To learn more about emotions, you know. Please, you know, buy, buy the book itself. On the back of the page, it says um, nine pounds. But um, as well, you guys can go online, I think, to um, paulekman.com and stuff. And you guys can read about him and stuff. You know, really intelligent guy. It, um, he understands a lot about, you know, emotions and stuff, you know. Um, and if you guys YouTube him as, as well and stuff, you know, um, he will also go more into this as, as well. Um, in, in, into our uh, um, facial expressions and, and how they can be systematically linked to our uh, emotions and how we feel. So, um, as well, um, if you guys have any questions or, in, or any answers or any statements and stuff, you know, leave it here also, also below and I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, and I'll see you guys on my next book review.